What's up, guys? Welcome back to Explain uh, for another episode this week, uh, where we engage the culture from a biblical perspective in a manner which glorifies God. Today, we are going to be talking about a post that appeared regarding John MacArthur. Um, uh, if you are not familiar with John MacArthur and his ministry, I would uh, highly recommend it to you. Um, he is a solid pastor, faithful man, faithful teacher and preacher of the Word of God. Um, he has stood strong on every, uh, you know, every cultural issue that has come his way. Um, very, very faithful man, trusted man, trusted ministry. Um, but he receives his fair share of backlash all the time, constantly. I saw his, um, uh, he's, he's had some, some health issues over the course of the past uh, calendar year. Uh, beginning, I think, I think it was actually uh, almost, almost a year ago to date uh, that he started to struggle with some health issues. And um, he, 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 because of that, he had to kind of, um, you know, dial back a little bit on his, his uh, participation at conferences and stuff like that. Uh, normally, you'd always see him at conferences like the G3 conference um, hosted by, uh, Josh Bice and his crew down in Georgia. Um, uh, but he couldn't, uh, he couldn't go to that. And, uh, recently, um, I was, I was a little bit under the weather last week. Um, I don't know if you could hear it in my voice last week, but, uh, yeah, I was, I was a little bit under the weather. Um, I had an opportunity to go through and watch, um, some stuff from the G3 conference back in, in, in last year in 2023, um, they have all the recordings up there online. If you haven't had a chance to watch them, would highly recommend uh, doing that. But uh, John MacArthur uh, could not go to that conference, but they had him, they basically re pre-recorded a sermon from him to play uh, for, uh, for those who attended. I think that they, I don't know, I think they initially had him in the schedule, but they had to change the schedule around a little bit. So I don't know if he actually ended up being broadcast in the big auditorium or whatever. Um, but anyway, his, his sermon did make it onto the G3 YouTube channel and I got to watch it. Um, and just one, he, he was talking about how basically in order to be in ministry, you have to be able to take hits. You know, you have to, you have to be able to, to, be ready for people to just constantly beat up on you. And uh, MacArthur made the point that like over, he said something like over the past few years, over the past just few years, he said, I've received more criticism than ever before. And that, that was just over the past few years. And he's been doing ministry a long time. And he said, this, these have been the craziest years as, as MacArthur, uh, you know, faithfully comes in for a landing here, right? Um, you know, hopefully he still has uh, uh, many, many solid years of, of ministry in front of him. Um, but he's, of course, mathematically speaking, you know, he's he's on the tail end of his his career. Um, and and so even, you know, even in, at this point in his uh, in his time in ministry, he's just taken so many hits. And I've noticed that. I've noticed that there are constantly people that are going after him. There are some people that desire to faithfully or, or graciously, I should say, engage with him, right? Uh, like people that want to engage with him on theological positions. That's fine. You know, there's there's no issues with that. But it's when people it's when people behave in a way that's disrespectful towards him. And I think that's really that's really where I wanted to go with this episode is. Uh, these men that have served for such a long time uh, in these ministry contexts, uh, just just unwavering all the time, they deserve our respect. They deserve our respect. And uh, John MacArthur is a good example of that. And like I said, for a long time now, I've wanted to deal with um, some, of the, some of the things that people just say on a daily and on a weekly basis against him. Um, and I found one that uh, I found one today that was... Uh, that just just drove me nuts. So I decided this is what we're going to talk about this week, okay? So let's look at this post. Uh, this post is from a guy named Scott Barber. Um, 
And it's a picture. It's This is a picture that's been circulating of John MacArthur teaching. I think he was teaching at Master's Seminary. Um, and uh, a bunch of guys who, uh, you know, who who really uh, love and appreciate his ministry got to uh, got to learn from him. Um, and one of them who happened to be, you know, close to the to the front row evidently took a picture of him. Right. So this picture has been circulating um, uh, all around. And uh, this guy decides to caption this picture, which basically means that you're uh, you're imagining what John MacArthur or what the, you know, what the person in the caption is saying in that moment. So it says, and that's when I thought, what if I just put my own name on the Bible and sold it for money? Okay. Now you may wonder, why am I engaging with a, with, with just a terrible, um, uh, half witted type of insult like that? Why would I engage with, with something like that? Well, this is the reason why. This is the reason why. Because if you are going to be, um, if you are going to be in any kind of ministry position, um, even if you're not going to be in a ministry position and you're just going to stand as a faithful Christian in the public square, uh, which all of us as Christians should be doing, you're going to get comments like this. Comments from people who probably didn't think for 10 seconds before they posted this. They, um, they basically want to have some, some fun at your expense. And so the question that we have to ask ourselves is, when a comment like that is levied against me, right? Now, now we know, let me, let me just give some background. Before I get into that, I need to give some background. So the 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 putting my name on the Bible thing that he's talking about here that he's referencing is uh, the John MacArthur Study Bible, the John MacArthur Study Bible, right? Which the reason why it's called, <laughs> I just don't understand how do how do people not see this? The reason why it's called the John MacArthur Study Bible is because all of John MacArthur's study notes are are in the margins. For you to uh, take away all of his um, all of his work from preparing sermons, from studying the scriptures, they're at the bottom of the page, right? So you get like the ESV Study Bible has that, or any any really any kind of study Bible has that, right? Well, this one has John MacArthur's notes at the bottom of it, right? I don't understand how how do people not see why his name is on the Bible, right? But the but the interest the interesting thing, right? And uh, this is. Uh, this, I, I just, I, I love this guy, Justin Peters, uh, Justin Peters comes back and he says, John did not even want his name on the study Bible. It was not even his decision. This is an uncharitable cheap shot. And I think you know that. Okay. So I think that we can find here just some basic rules of, of engagement with people who like could because okay so over the over the past couple of weeks we've engaged with various types of 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 issues right some people some people will build a case even if it's a wrong case they'll build a case for something right like um like uh like like doctor like doctor kevin m young right like that episode that we did where we dealt with his post he built a case. It was a wrong case. It, I don't even think, I think it was a disingenuous case, but he built a case, right? So we had to pick through his arguments and stuff. Um, and even last week, Beth Moore, Beth Moore was building a case, right? She was kind of trying to fly under the radar and kind of plant it in your mind without, you know, without you recognizing that she was doing it. She was trying to guilt you into doing something, right? She was trying to guilt you into responding a certain way. So, you know, we had to deal with that. We had to dismantle the argument piece by piece, right? What about when someone shoots something at you that's so ridiculous that, you know, that you just, like, you don't even have to dismantle the argument. It's just right there and it's like, here it is, right? Because that's what we're dealing with here. That's the type of thing that we're dealing with with... Uh, with this thing that this person said about MacArthur. Um, and I can guarantee you that he gets these types of, of disingenuine, disingenuous comments all the time. And I think there's two, there's two rules that we can learn from, uh, from, from these types of interactions, right? Two different things that we can apply. 
uh, in these types of interactions. The first rule is this, the truth matters. The truth matters, right? So when someone comes along and says something about you that is not true, you have the, you, you have, you have every right to tell them what they're saying is not true. Okay, now this applies with all different types of things. Like, for example, um, you, you know, if, if you get called a Christian nationalist because of what you believe, and if you get called a, a, a fascist or a person that hates black people or a person that hates women, a person that hates this group and that group, and, and if you know if you're a faithful Christian, you don't hate any of those groups, right? You know what you do? You just tell them that's not true. That's not true. You don't have to accept the labels that the world throws on you. You don't, especially when it's not the truth. You don't have to accept those things. You don't. You don't, okay? So that's the first thing. The truth matters. The truth matters. And, you know, like people all the time, they, they, they live in such a way where they, where they don't, like the truth. They don't accept the truth. They don't want to accept the truth. And so they cloud it and all these different things, right? They, uh, they, they hide their rejection of the truth and all these different things. And a lot of times, one of the ways that they can uh, hide their rejection of the truth is by insulting you instead, right? Um, okay, so that's, that's really the imperative. The imperative is the truth matters. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can communicate that the truth matters. And this, this is the second thing, right? You can go a couple of different... This is the second uh, rule of engagement with people, but, but I would call it like, like a, like a sub-point, right? Or, or this, is, this is something that has a couple of different sub-points, right? Uh, there are a couple of different ways that you can go when you're engaging with someone like this, right? The first thing that you can do, right, and this is a very viable, um, solid option, <laughs> is you can just do what John MacArthur did and not answer them, right? To my knowledge, he did not answer this person, right? And that's, that's one thing that you can do. You can just not answer the person. And this especially applies uh, if, number one, the, the thing that the person said was just completely nonsensical. Number two, it, it, it applies if you know you have people like Justin Peters that are going to come swooping in to tell the person that they're wrong anyway, right? So that is one thing that, uh, that you can do because in your non-answer of the person, it just completely invalidates their opinion. Most of the, especially when it's something that's disingenuous like this. Again, if you're talking about someone that's accusing you of some like heinous thing, that's different. You do have to, you know, you, you probably have to engage with that person, right? If, especially if they're like someone who has some kind of clout, right? Someone who can actually do something about their accusation of you, right? Uh, but when it's someone like this who, you know, who uh, just kind of, woke up and decided he was <laughs> going to say this thing, uh, spent 10 seconds deciding what he was going to say and then sent it. You don't have to answer him because your, your, um, your, your non-engagement with this person is going to completely invalidate what they're thinking, right? Uh, like, like the scriptures talk about, uh, don't answer a fool according to their folly, right? This would be a good example of you're not answering the fool according to their folly, right? You're, you're not stooping down to his level and saying, oh yeah, well, uh, well, this is what I think of you, you know, like you know, th there, there is some, some value in that, right? Like I've seen, I've seen John MacArthur and, uh, you know, obviously he's employed this before with other things. Um, I've seen, you know, you know, one other person who I should commend for this, who I've seen do this is Owen Strayan. For some reason, Owen Strayan gets tons of just very, very hateful comments that are thrown at him uh, for stuff that he says. The, the, the stuff he says is completely reasonable and good, but the stuff that other people say in response is just, just completely disingenuous and not even worthy of a response. And he doesn't give the response, right? Like I always, you know, if I see a comment that someone makes at, at, at Owen Strayan, uh, if someone says something to, to him, um, a lot of times I'll look to see if he responded. And I, I mean, I'll tell you, he almost never does respond to people like that. 
uh, you're communicating to them that their opinion is so bad that it's not even worth the time of day. Okay, so that is one way that you can engage with people like that is by actually, you're communicating something by not engaging with them. Okay, that's one way to do it. There's another way to do it too. Um, another way to do it is to, uh, to <laughs> I call it the Doug Wilson method. Okay, the Doug Wilson method. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever seen Doug Wilson interact with his critics. Doug Wilson has had plenty of critics over the years. They've he's he's been criticized about just about everything. Just about everything that you could think of. And um, one thing that he I've I've seen him do, I saw him do it specifically. He gave this talk on 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 sexuality, biblical sexuality. Um, I think it was at the University of Idaho, and he took a uh, he did like a question and answer time after his talk. And the students were so angry at him, a lot of them. They were just so hostile to him. Right. And, and that's the type of environment that would just that would crumble you. Right. And a, a lot of times, like if, it, if we're being honest, a lot of us would crumble in an environment like that. Right. Where you're standing on the stage getting drilled by people who are who are asking you questions or not even asking you questions, hurling comments, abusive comments at you uh, that that are that are not even worthy of a response. Any of them. Right. And you have to somehow find a way to analyze what this person is saying and answer them. And so Doug Wilson's responses to these people who were insulting him, like really badly insulting him in ways that I couldn't even repeat on this podcast. Okay. His response to those people, especially like the people that were making just these crass, terrible jokes at his expense. He had every right to get angry at these people, right? You could say from a human perspective, but he didn't. A lot of times people would make jokes about him at his expense and he would laugh with those people at himself. Now, to me, that is that is just incredible. But I think that that is a good way to disarm people. I think that when people realize that, you know, I'm not taking myself too seriously either, I think that really does go a long way with engagement because you completely shut the other person down, right? And again, we're, you know, we're talking this week about how do you deal with disingenuous comments? How do you, how do you deal with comments that, that are not even really, you know, that you can't even, you can't even make a good response to them because they're so dumb, right? This is this is the type of comment that we're talking about dealing with, like like this the comment that this person made about John MacArthur, um, and it's just it's just in- incredible to me how people will make these these comments. They'll uh, you know they they won't think for more than ten seconds about them, and they'll just fire them off at you, right? And the, the, here's the thing: this can happen not just in um, you know, in, in the internet world, right? This is not just, we're not just talking about rules for engagement in the internet world. We're talking about rules for engagement in the real world, right? Like the, these types of comments don't just stay online. They come out into the open. People actually say things like this against you, right? And this is not even the worst of them, right? Like I had to pick a tame comment that someone said about John MacArthur in order to even air it on this podcast, right? Of course. Um, but these these comments, they make it out into the world and oftentimes they're not tame. And so the, the question is, how are we going to answer these people in such a way where we can disarm the 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 vitriol that they're shooting these comments at us with in such a way where um, we can actually come back with something that's that's uh, potentially even a presentation of the gospel or a, or a presentation of biblical truth somehow right like again like if I bring you back to, to Doug Wilson's example um, I notice that sometimes the the fact that he would laugh at these people's jokes about himself, he would laugh with these people about about himself. It would just completely disarm those people. It would give him an opportunity to start talking about something scriptural, something that they probably didn't even want to hear. 
at first. Right? And so that's the question is in, in a world like this, um, what ways can we deal with people who fire comments at us like this? One way to do it is just don't give them any time of day. Because their comment at you, whether in person or online, is not worth the time of day, right? It's 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 not worth it. It's not worth it. Uh, the the other option is uh, you can you can almost not take yourself too seriously, and you might be able to take that opportunity and turn it around and. and talk to the person, right? I mean, the ultimate goal here is for people like this, for people who behave like this, we want to put ourselves in the position that Justin Peters put himself in at the end of it, right? Where he's calling the guy to repentance, basically. He's saying this guy is wrong. He's calling the guy on on the thing that he said that was wrong, right? Like we want to be in the situation where we're calling this guy to repentance, uh, where we're calling the person who behaves like this guy to repentance uh, and to to faith in Christ, right? Like that's that's the ultimate goal. The question is, um, how can we respond to the things that people say to us in such a way where uh, where where we can set that up, where we can disarm a person, right? Um, that's the question that we have to ask. And so the the rules for engagement with people who make disingenuous comments, right? Number one, the truth is central. The truth is most important. The truth is of utmost value. Value the truth. Okay, I I could say it a hundred different other ways, right? But if someone is saying something about you that's not true, you have every right to say that's not true. Okay, someone makes an untrue accusation against you, that's not true. Okay, that's that's perfectly okay to say. Um. With that priority, okay, with that priority in our minds, um, rule number two of engagement with the culture, rule number two of engagement with disingenuous comments like this one is, number one, you could choose to, remember we have a a fork in the road here, right? You have to choose. You could choose to uh, either don't answer the fool according to his folly, right? Um, You know, you, you want to... Uh, give this person no time of day, which is fine. Um, or if you have an opportunity maybe to, uh, you know, if you can laugh at yourself, go for it, right? I mean, it's, it's, it depends on the situation. It totally depends on the situation. I mean, John MacArthur realistically could have, respond, could have not responded to this guy because he didn't even see the post. But the question is, when we see a post like this, how do we deal with it? And those are the two ways that we can deal with it. And it calls for wisdom in in each situation. Like, are we going to uh, laugh with the other person at ourselves? Or are we going to just not engage with them and not engage with what they're saying? Those are both perfectly 100% reasonable ways to engage with people. And I think it really does come down to what is the thing that's being said about us, right? Like, is the thing that's being said about us like like a morally untrue thing, a morally wrong thing? Like, this is that that's what's being said about John MacArthur here, that he had some kind of selfish intention and that he, that's, that's why he wanted to put his name on the Bible or something like that, right? Like that's, that's a morally untrue thing, right? That's, 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 that's just not true, right? And that's a moral accusation that's being levied against MacArthur. It's just not true. It's just not true, right? Like we know, even, even Justin Peters said, it wasn't even MacArthur's choice and MacArthur didn't even want his name on the Bible. So (laughs) take that, right? But the question has to be, I guess, like, is, is the, um, is the, the thing that's being said about us, Something that if we were to even laugh with the other person at ourselves, um, uh, would it be the type of accusation where um, where it's they're accusing us of something that's morally wrong? Like I remember the the accusations that were being made against Doug Wilson in that uh, um, in in that question and answer time um, 
were things like, you know, like the, 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 the types of insults that people were hurling at him were like, you know, they had to, had to do with like his appearance or like the clothes that he was wearing and, you know, like things like that. Right. And so he was able to just take that and, and laugh at it. So you see there, you, you, there, there is a, a difference like wisdom. It calls for wisdom, right? Like we have to, we have to take the things that people are saying and uh, you know, if we see an opportunity where we can go along with it without giving them the impression that, uh, that we actually did the thing that they're accusing us of doing. Right. And that the thing that we're, that they're accusing us of doing is like some kind of morally wrong thing. Like he is selfish and he wrote his name, you know, he put his name on the Bible. Right. Like, I mean, if we were to laugh with them about that, then they could get the impression, Oh, well, you know, he did put his name on the Bible because he's being selfish and prideful. Right. Um, that would be the type of situation where we wouldn't want to laugh with them about it at ourselves because then we're giving them affirmation that maybe that actually was the reason why we did it. Right. Um, that would be a good example where like we saw here, um, you don't answer the fool according to his folly, right? You stand on the truth. This is the thing. This is the, 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 the dividing line. This is the, uh, the way to, uh, decide how to respond is the truth. Because the truth matters. The truth matters. Okay, so so in a situation like that, no, we wouldn't want to laugh with the person at ourselves, right? But if someone says, "Hey, your tie looks like uh, looks like you ripped fabric off of a tablecloth or something," like I don't know, I can't I can't think of a good insult right now, right? Um, someone says something like that, we don't have to get angry at the at the other person and say oh well you know why, why would you say that about me you know like we can we can laugh with the other person at ourselves right because they're not expecting us to and that can that can disarm them right because they're they're really not expecting that um and i think it really comes down to this um i think a lot of times people take themselves too seriously people take themselves too seriously so they can get um, you know, they can get fired up, um, for, for, no, for no good reason. Right. Um, and that's what leads people to, uh, respond when they shouldn't respond. Right. Um, and, uh, or, or to take what someone said too seriously when it doesn't really need to be taken seriously. Um, even though the person in both, you know, instances has, malcontent right like this post this person has malcontent right they're not they, they're not trying to engage with anything that john macarthur is saying or doing um they just woke up th th this morning and decided they wanted to uh say this thing about john macarthur right and so again like i said like the, the question has to be what is the truth what is the truth? Are we, are we going to, cause, cause if we can stand on the truth, right? If we can stand on what we know the truth is about ourselves, then we can really have, we can have the, 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 the fortitude to be able to say, this person is saying something that's disingenuous and I am not going to answer them because they're being a fool. Okay. Or we could say, well, this person is being a fool and I'm going to show them how much of a fool that they're being because I'm going to uh, laugh at them, basically. Right? Those are both those are both responses that can be made, right? But at the end of the day, the truth matters. And that's what we have to that's what we have to say at the end of the day is the truth matters. And in this case, you know, when you look at John MacArthur and the post about John MacArthur, we know that this post was not true. It was wrong. It was uh, it was sinful to post a post like this, um, and I'm glad that Justin Peters came flying into the rescue. All right, so uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for tuning in to another week of Explain, and we'll see you next time.